Hi, boys and girls. I have another story for you today. This one is about a tornado. Sometimes in the springtime when we have big storms, sometimes we have tornadoes, but not too often around here. This one is called Otis and the Tornado. It's by Lauren Long. Some of you may have heard some other Otis stories. Otis is this tractor here, and he gets himself into all kinds of adventures. So let's find out about Otis and the Tornado. Life was calm on the farm where the friendly little tractor named Otis lived. It was summer, the sun shined bright, the birds chirped, and after all the work was done, Otis and his friend, the little calf, liked to play. They would gather their farm friends for a grand game of follow the leader. They would take turns being the leader as they marched along. Otis would go first, puff, puff, puffity, chuff, followed by the little calf, who would bound ahead, bawling all the while. Soon the horse would trot to the lead with a neigh, neigh, and his hooves clip-clop, clip-clopped. Finally, the ducks would waddle to the front with a chorus of quack, 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 quack. They all followed the leader, up by the apple tree, around the barn, down the rolling hill, past Mud Pond, beyond the cornfield, across the meadow, and along the banks of Mud Creek. What a fun crowd they were. Everyone was so friendly except... There's that dot, 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 that lips there. Let's see what happens. Wait for it. The bull. The bull was nobody's friend when he was not in his pen he was kept in a pasture all by himself. Take a look at his face. He doesn't look like the happiest of bulls. If any of the other farm animals got close, the bull would stand at the fence and snort and snarl and huff hot air suddenly with a burst he would run back and forth along the fence. Then he would stop and glare at them like a statue, never moving a muscle except to flare his nostrils. The bull did not like anyone, and everyone was afraid of him. That doesn't sound like a good friend to have on the farm. Once, Otis tried to make friends with the bull. He took him a shiny red apple from the apple tree and invited him to play. But the bull snorted and snarled and glared at Otis. Then he stomped his hooves in the dirt and charged. The bull slammed into the fence just inches away from where Otis stood. On that, from that day on, Otis stayed clear of the bull altogether. But do you want to play with somebody who's not being nice to you? One day... The farm skies began to swirl and turn dark. The winds blew and the rain came down. The animals in the barn grew restless and jittery. The skies tumbled and turned and turned and tumbled. Otis didn't mind the rain, but there was something different about this storm that he could feel deep down inside his pipes. All at once, the wind stopped blowing, not even a breeze and the rain disappeared. The sky turned a strange shade of green and the farm fell completely still. The only sound Otis heard as he puffed towards the barn was the farmer shouting in the distance, it's coming fast, get down in the cellar. The farmer was in such a hurry, he had no time for the animals. What was this fuss all about, Otis wondered. Then he turned and saw something that rattled his frame and shook his fenders. I wonder what he saw. A tornado.
and it was heading straight towards the farm. What would happen to all the animals locked in the barns? Otis sprung into action. He nudged the latch of the little calf's stall until the door swung open. Next, Otis freed the pigs and the sheep. The winds howled closer. He stretched to unlatch the horses and the cow's doors at the same time. Click, clack. The animals were free. They followed Otis out of the barn into the swirling winds. They followed him down the rolling hill, past Mud Pond, beyond the cornfield, across the meadow, over the bank, and down in the Mud Creek. Tucked down in the lowest part of the farm, Otis, the little calf, and all their farm friends felt safe. Otis sighed relief. Now that they just had to huddle together and wait it out. But just as they squeezed close and tight, Otis heard an awful bellowing cry, the sound of a large creature in trouble, the bull. He was locked in his pen. From the safety of Mud Creek, Otis saw the tornado speeding in the terrified animal's direction. Lightning crashed. The tornado howled, the bull screamed, and in a flash, Otis was gone. He raced across the meadow, puff, puff, puffity, chuff, beyond the cornfield, past mud pond, and up the rolling hill to the bullpen. Otis found the bull tucked under the shed, shaking in fear. Otis tried to unlatch the gate. It was locked. He slammed head on into it. The gate shook but held firm. Otis rammed it again. The gate teetered. The bull wailed like a baby. Otis spun around, threw himself in reverse, revved up his engine, and charged backward into the gate. Crash! The gate shattered into pieces. Otis shook himself off, gave the bull a friendly chuff, and peeled out. The bull followed Otis down the rolling hill, past Mud Pond, beyond the cornfield. The tornado roared like a freight train as they crossed the meadow, just as Otis and the bull dove for cover over the bank and into Mud Creek. The tornado touched down, narrowly missing them. It's awfully close looking. Otis, the little calf, the bull and all the farm friends ducked their heads and closed their eyes. They had never heard such a fury or felt such a rage, but they were all safely tucked down into the muddy creek's bed and the lowest part of the farm. And they stayed huddled there until long after the tornado passed. And if you look closely, you can see all of these things flying up above their heads. They came out only when it was calm and the sun shined bright and the birds began to chirp. They found a farm that needed great repair. But when the work was all over, it was time to play. The farm friends discovered that they had a new playmate. This one snorted and stomped its hooves in the dirt flared his nostrils and huffed hot air. But instead of a snarl and a glare, he wore a happy grin and a friendly gaze as he took his place in line with Otis and the little calf in the grand game that they called Follow the Leader. The end. I would like to know what lesson you possibly learned from this book. Make sure you drop it down in your story map if you do one. Or you can also just write it down on a piece of paper or send me a video message and let me know. Have a great day. Bye.